Hey guys, welcome to another Dream Trip Oz How To video. In this video, I'm going to be installing the Projector PM Shunt. Now, in a previous video uh, on our channel, uh, I did a run through on our off grid power system, and one of our viewers commented and suggested that uh, I install a PM Shunt. Uh, the reason being is, when we upgraded our power systems in the caravan, I put in an inverter, uh, extra solar panels, and an extra DC-DC uh, and solar controller charger. Um, because of the high current nature of those devices, I connected them directly to our battery bank, which means the PM300 system that we have installed in our uh, 2022 Jayco all-terrain uh, couldn't see that current draw from the inverter as well as the extra charging from our uh, additional solar panels which meant the readout was terribly inaccurate uh, which actually led to us um, drawing, running our batteries down way too low on one particular occasion and the fridge went off and uh, it was catastrophic. So, as a result from that video and the comment from that user, who I'll, I'll give special thanks to right now, uh, I've since installed a PM shunt. Now, what does a PM shunt do? Well, it's rated at 500 amps, and you can connect your extra loads and charging sources uh, to it, and it measures the current flow across and gives you a balance of your current in versus your current out and uh, displays that on your PM300 or PM400 display. Uh, it gives you a much more accurate readout so that you can um, effectively manage your power consumption, which is critical uh, for getting off grid uh, longer, further, and uh, making sure your fridge doesn't go off, keep your food nice and cold. So I'm gonna jump straight in uh, to an unboxing and then uh, straight into the installation which was a video I made some time ago and at the end I'll explain the benefits and try to give you a rundown on the display so that you know what you're looking at and you know what you're getting for your money. Now I ordered the shunt, PM shunt, through an online mob called Batteries Direct I think and it cost about uh, $275 delivered uh, which in my opinion, is money well spent. So stay tuned. Uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments. Please like and subscribe uh, so you don't miss a thing. And I'll try and put some more of these videos out explaining what we do and how we do it. Anyway, I'm gonna jump straight into the unboxing. Let's go. So this is the box, it's pretty small. What do we got here? So the projector PM shunt, uh, 500 amp shunt with cables to suit the PM300 and PM400 series uh, IntelliJ BMS systems. Um, righto, so <clears throat> quick instruction manual there, installation guide, which uh, I'll see, I'll get a digital version of it and I'll put it on the screen here so we can zoom in and talk about it as we go. <clears throat> That'll be handy for me. Packet of accessories, so I'll just open this up real quick. <clears throat> Give you an idea of what we've got. Set that aside. Some screws for mounting, I assume. That goes to the uh, positive battery terminal. This here appears to be the connection to get uh, connected to the existing BMS system here. Pretty straightforward. And the shunt itself. Righto, so I'm gonna jump into the installation video now, but it is worth mentioning that because the PM shunt, it comes with just about everything you need, but because you're inserting it between your load negative and your battery bank negative terminal, you will need a cable that's rated to your total current draw to connect between your negative battery terminal and the shunt itself important to know that because uh, I had to do some running around last minute to make it happen. Anyway, uh, I'll jump into the installation now. So 
So if you have a look at this diagram that I've got up on the screen, you can see that the shunt quite simply uh, inserts on the negative side of your uh, supply battery, your service battery. It's got to be a sizable cable because all of your load goes on the other side of the shunt. So it's got to be rated to whatever your total load's going to be. So it's going to be a serious cable. It's my hot tip if you're, for the day, if you're out and about on the road and you don't have the space in your toolkit to carry a massive swaging tool for doing these bigger, sort of heavier duty lugs, a good set of vice grips, you can achieve the same thing. So I just get it started and then slowly tension it up as I go. So give it a good squeeze, pop it open, tension it up, give it another squeeze, pop it open, tension it up, uh, another good squeeze, again and again, over and over, and you will get a good squeeze on that cable, you see that? But I've also got this bit in here, which is almost like a blade, like a cutting blade, if I get this right in here, right into the inside of the mouth of that uh, vice grips, I can give it a real good pinch. Bam! And you'll see, you know, if I just do that over and over again, see that? Nice good pinch on there. I'll do the other side. That'll give me a good tight connection. See? Not bad. I'll just chuck a bit of heat shrink over that. Keep any of those exposed bits covered up, nice and safe. And she's good to go. It's my little uh, negative bus bar link. Just uh, doing some tidying up before I get stuck in. Okay, <coughs> so it's a bit hard to see down here, but. I've decided on a location for the shunt. It's going to go down here in the corner uh, because it's nice and close to my neutral bus bar. Uh, so <clears throat> I've just got a little link here that I've made up so I can link that to all of my loads except for uh, the inverter, which I'm going to get a nice uh, 250 amp cable uh, which will connect straight onto the lug, uh, the load side lug of the shunt. Um, just so that I don't have to have a 250 amp, a massive 250 amp bus bar in here to handle that current. So it'll just go direct to that uh, side, the load side, the right hand side of the shunt. And this little link cable that I've made up will go from the right hand side, the load side of the shunt, to my neutral or my negative bus bar there. So I'll get that done now. Uh, I've got a cable here, 250 amp cable. That's my uh, battery negative, which will go on this side of the shunt, the battery negative uh, side of the shunt. So uh, that all of the negative load passes through the shunt and I assume that's how it works. I, I assume that uh, it looks at the current uh, out and uh, calculates um, uh, battery charge state from that. Okay, so it's important to note at this point that all of your charging devices, any additional charging devices, so if you've got extra DC, DC chargers or solar controllers for additional solar panels on your roof, then they also connect to the right hand side, to the load side of the shunt. Uh, that way the current from them passes across the shunt as well and will be measured and used to calculate your balance, uh, whether you're um, in surplus or deficit. Anyway, right, I'll um, bolt this together and uh, come back with the final, the battery positive connections and the connection through to the IntelliJ, uh, what have we got? PM335J in here. So on this side of the shunt, 
uh, the only connection you can have is directly to the battery. Uh, if you have any other connections on here, then the shunt won't be able, it won't read across the shunt. It'll just be connected directly to the negative of your battery bank. Uh, and it won't give you accurate readings. So the only connection you can have on this terminal is directly to your battery bank. And that's where this goes. This is a 250 amp rated cable that goes outside to my uh, battery bank out there. So now I'm just going to connect the uh, positive supply to the shunt. And it comes with this pre-terminated cable. It's got a uh, ring lug or t battery terminal lug on one end and a spade connector on the other. The spade connector just plugs straight into, see what it says on the label here, PM, PM shunt plus B1. So it plugs straight into the shunt and uh, this end goes straight onto the positive terminal of your battery now. <clears throat> uh, it looks a bit long, so I might end up cutting it down and, and putting a new lug on that, but uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so it comes with this other supplied cable, which I'm trying to focus on. Uh, which is a breakout cable. Uh, it gives you the connection to uh, the shunt via this RJ45 plug and it's a little inline connector that plugs on, and if I read this label correctly, LCD display. So if I look down here on my PM335J, LCD display. So in theory, I'll pull this, plug it into here, in line, plug this into LCD display. Actually, what I'll do, I'll plug the shunt in first so that it all fires up at the same time with this uh, huge bloody five meter cable. Um, I mean, if this is a standard uh, Cat5 cable or whatever it is, then I'll probably swap it out in future for just a short little patch lead. Uh, I'll make up my own, but I don't have any here and I don't have the tools, so uh, this will suffice for now. Anyway, I'm just going to plug this, this RJ45 connector down into the shunt there, and then I'll come back, plug in the little breakout cable here and then uh, we'll have a look at the LCD screen and see if we can make sense of the settings. So back in two. Righto, so this is the app, the IntelliJ app and you can do the setup uh, via the IntelliJ app as opposed to the LCD. It seems a lot easier to do it via the app, so I'm going to do it via the app. If you don't have the app, the instruction manual shh, here comes with all the steps you need to take to do it via the LCD, but the uh, this looks heaps easier. So, set up via the app. Enter setting menu by settings Equipment setting, shunt, select active, and then confirm. Well, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, let's have a look and see if the LCD looks any different. Oh yeah, it's doing its thing here. So, what's it saying here? Yes, it's 440 amp hours. Correct. All right, well that's it. We're now solid green light down there on the shunt. And if you can see, I'll get a bit closer. The solid green light on the shunt. All right, and last but not least, I have this uh, heavy gauge 250 amp negative link, 
which I've taken straight from the, the load post, uh, the load side of the shunt, uh, and it's going to connect straight onto the inverter. Uh, and then I might fire it up, see what it looks like, fire up the uh, aircon or something like that, and uh, give you a look at how it reads on the uh, projector um, screen, display, LCD display. Cool, give us a second. Cool, so that's the inverter connected to the shunt now. I'll put the cover back on. It comes with this really nice lid uh, with some fold away uh, sort of punch outs. All right, so we've had the shunt installed now for at least three or four months and it has been invaluable. I, we certainly could not manage our power consumption, uh, both our input and our output, uh, effectively if we didn't have it. So it, it's an absolute must have if you're adding extra uh, input or output devices, extra loads or charging currents, you've got to have it, all right? So um, if you've got this uh, IntelliJ battery management system. All right, if you are a Jayco user or a Jayco owner, then you know this display already and you're probably used to reading this readout up here for your current consumption and this readout down the bottom for your current in or your charging. Well, unfortunately, you've got to completely disregard those now. <laughs> I mean, this display up here is still useful for reading your battery voltage, but it's not an accurate display of your current draw because this display up here only shows the current draw directly connected to your battery management system. So say for example, your lights or any other device that's um, fitted from factory. The same is to be said for your charging readout or any current coming in. This figure down here for your solar is only displaying the solar input from your factory fitted panels or panels that are connected directly to the solar controller built into your uh, PM300 or 400, uh, which also includes if you've got an additional plug on the outside of your van from factory, uh, it will also include that. However, it doesn't include your shunt because your shunt cannot differentiate between current in and current out. It can only give you a balance. And that's where this readout, the finer print just here, above your uh, state of charge readout, that's where that readout comes into play. So we don't even look at these ones anymore, this one or this one down here. We just look at this fine print in the middle here, which shows us our balance, our power balance or current balance which you can see currently uh, with our solar panels on our roof and the uh, included solar panels, we are at a surplus of 22.8 amps. Now that's the balance after all of the solar panels coming in. So we've got four 200 watt solar panels coming in and our current going out, which is yeah, it does include this current up here, which is stuff that's connected directly to the battery management system, but it also includes stuff that we have connected via the shunt, like our inverter. So our Starlink, my laptop, so on and so forth. It also includes the air conditioner, which is in, uh, connected to the inverter. So I'll fire up the air conditioner so that you can see, you'll get a good idea then of what I mean by our power balance. You'll see this surplus of 22 amps uh, shoot, <laughs> it'll plummet down to a uh, deficit once the air conditioner is fired up. You'll be able to watch it plunge, plummet down into the negatives. So we're already down to eight amps surplus, now down to 2.3, now we're into the negatives. So now you can see that we are going backwards, we're at a deficit of 
18 amps and climbing, minus 22, and so on and so forth. So these are the figures that we look at now. We know that if we're sitting at a deficit of 35 amps, we can calculate, we can start doing the sums. We know that uh, we're not putting in enough charge to keep our batteries at 100%, and we have to start considering then how long we can operate like that for. And that's the beauty of the shunt. That's the entire reason for installing the shunt, is that we can now accurately, very accurately see uh, exactly where we stand. We get a good accurate readout on our state of charge, our battery state of charge, and that is the most important thing. So anyway, if you like uh, this video, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, let me know in the comments if, you've, uh, if you need anything else or need any clarifications. I'd be more than happy to uh, uh, respond to your comments. I try to get back within a day or so. Or if need be, I can always put out another video. So uh, please make sure you subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching. Safe travels and as always, rock and roll. Gust of wind rippling dance through my hair as I stare along the straightest road I've ever seen Each new horizon goes on forever Let's see what we can find We won't pretend we're sad Cause it's wondrous here Wish you were here too Our life adventure has our hearts, our family, so This must be home Must be home